Hey, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. And uh, yeah, it's time for another story time episode. Um, today we are working on Scapegoat. This is Working Dogs Book One. This is by J.R. Gray. I'm very excited to work with J.R. Gray. I've worked um, one of J.R. Gray's books through Tantor before, but I've never worked this as um, J.R. Gray hired me on his own. Kind of a big deal. Um, so I'm very excited about this. And this book is a different animal. It's, uh, I, I guess you would say, uh, romance suspense. Uh, and it's really fucking good, too. I'm enjoying it. So I'm going to read the blurb here, um, and then we're going to flip over, and I'll kind of explain the story time concept in case, in case you all haven't seen it before. <laughs> At 17, I ran. I joined the military and planned to never step foot in my hometown again. Nothing could make me return to that hellhole and the pain I buried there, or so I thought until I found myself on a plane to that very place. Almost two decades later, I'm forced home to help find a missing nine-year-old. As a member of the most elite canine special unit in the country, it was my job, and you can't exactly say no to the FBI. It should be easy, and I won't have to face what I ran from. However, the case is anything but simple, and to make matters worse, I'm faced with the last person I ever wanted to see again. Officer Callum Stone the sheriff's son, and the town's golden boy. Only he's not anymore. He's a ruin of what he once was. It's Callum's kid who's missing, and all the feelings I'd spent almost 20 years running from rise to the surface. As secrets come to light, we realize our small town is hiding a lot more than we thought, and we'll have to follow the trail of deception to get justice, and maybe a second chance at love. Scapegoat is a second-chance M.M. romance suspense featuring a small town, some FBI canine fun, and hurt comfort vibes. It is the first book in J.R. Gray's Working Dog series, which will be packed with action, suspense, and humor. Here's the uh, cover, by the way. Check that out. <clears throat> you know, you couldn't be in the FBI and have abs like that. that that's like a full-time job, developing abs like that. I'm just pointing that out. <clears throat> Pain us. Anyways... So, um, this is a story time episode. Some of y'all have seen this, some of you haven't. What this is, is a real life recording session. That means when we flip over here in a moment, uh, you're going to be watching the real recording of, I believe, chapter 15 of this book. Now, there really are no spoilers in here. You know that these two guys are obviously going to get together. And in this scene, in fact, they do. This scene is not safe for work. Please don't watch it with your children or any of that shit. Um, <clears throat> but you're also going to hear me fuck up constantly because... It's a live recording session. I fuck up. Normally, my lovely TNA, Tracy Johns, would be in here uh, correcting me, but turns out she abandoned me this evening for choir practice. She didn't really abandon me. She does it every Tuesday, and I decided I wanted to continue working. So it's my fault. I love you, Trace. Please don't yell at me. Now, <clears throat> in this, I also I work live in Discord. Um, so you're also going to see me occasionally refer to the screen and uh, comment on somebody that somebody's typed in. Um, please understand that that just happens. I typically ignore the camera entirely in these, so... Anyways, I've given you enough. I think you get the fucking point. It's a fly on the wall. You're, you're watching me do a recording session. So, hope you all enjoy, have fun, and I will see you on the next go-around. Fifteen. Special Agent Nolan Hudson. I don't think I've ever wanted anything more in my life. Callum reached around me to push the door closed, backing me into it at the same time. I can't stop thinking about your skin on mine. My pulse spiked as I drank in the very dominant position he took, cock filling all the space left in my tactical pants. And what's this? He pressed his groin into mine, roughly grinding against me while he gave me a taste of his lips. Look, cock filling all the space left in my tactical pants. And what's this? He pressed his groin into mine, roughly grinding against me while he gave me a taste of his lips. You're not the only one who learned a thing or two over the years. It would be so easy to get drunk off him. I want to see all the things you've learned. Tell me they belong to me. 
His brows rose and a coy grin formed. All for you. Every single inch. The roll of his ass with each word had me nearly begging for more. Are you trying to kill me? I haven't gotten any sleep in days. I pretended to fight it, fight his hold, but it was just an excuse to dry fuck him, gripping him closer. Not kill you, but I do want to be the reason you come. He moved to my neck, sucking and licking a warm trail. I thought about being inside you for twenty years. You promised me your ass. I met his pressure, slowly rolling my hips to increase the friction between us, not giving in nor letting him chicken out. Hang on again. Nor letting him chicken out. I'm not bad tracking. Burp, 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 burp. The friction between us, not giving in nor letting him chicken out. Yeah, I saw they didn't have noise cancellation. It's hilarious. It's the friction between us. Not giving in nor letting him chicken out. I'm not backtracking on that. But that doesn't mean I don't want yours. His words were low and laced with lust. Even his eyes dark and need shining through them. Good. Because I've been thinking about yours just as long. The truth of those words made me breathless. I'd fucked my hand so many times imagining it. We're going to put a pin in that, because I want to hear all about the last twenty years of you thinking about it, and exactly what that entailed. I tilted my head, putting my lips next to his ear. Why wait? Why don't I tell you how I've thought about it so much? You have more mental views than all porn combined. He picked up his head, staring at me. You're not kidding. I shook my head. No. What do you picture? He asked, breathless, the slow grind getting to him. I was high on the power that came with turning him on. This, but with a lot less clothes. Just like this? He glanced between us, watching our hard-on slide together. Mm hmm. The real thing is better. His gaze flickered back to mine. Why? Because I didn't know you'd watch. Of course I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch while I fuck myself in and out of you, too. He nipped at my lower lip, a glint in his eyes. To my lower lip, a glint in his eyes. I don't think I'd ever been so turned on in my life. I'm going to make you earn it. His hips stilled and he paused. I have to earn it? A smirk took my lips and I let him taste it. You heard me right. And how do I earn it? Callum dropped his head to my chest, sucking one of my nipples through my shirt. I grabbed his hair. Shit. I don't know, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. He laughed and hummed against my chest. <laughs> Since you're the one pinned against the door, I'm not sure I'll have to earn it. I clawed at him, not trying to fight him off, but letting him know he was in for it if he tried to take me before I got inside him. I don't think you have the energy for a fight. I might. Depends on the type. Callan didn't stop what he was doing, and he was going to have me coming in my pants if he kept it up. No, the fuck you don't. I shoved a hand between us, working open his jeans with ease. Sleeping around and not getting attached for a long time had its benefits. I had my hand around him quickly, squeezing and stroking as he rocked into me. Shit. He faltered, pressing his forehead into my neck, moaning out his pleasure. Is that what you learned, Cal? to take what I'm giving you. I couldn't hold back the words. Not even close. He hardened even more in my hand, contradicting his words. Sure seems like it. 
I found more confidence than I'd ever had before and pushed him, one hand on his chest and the other one on his cock. He grunted, stumbling a step, then two backward. My grip on him kept him upright. Jesus, Nolan. I shoved again, only keeping a hold on his dick, walking with him. I want what I want. Callum's thighs hit the bed and he sized me up. You're going to hate me. Don't tell me you're backing out on me now. Me? Don't tell me you're backing out on me now. My nostrils flared, so gone to lust I didn't know how I'd react if he didn't want me. I don't have condoms. He searched my face with an apologetic crease in his brow. Single dad who works too much? No time for those types of... crease in his brow. Single dad who works too much? No time for those types of things? No. Uh, crease in his brow. Single dad who works too much? No time for those types of things? No time? Is that what held you back? I squared up to him, standing a couple of inches taller. I hadn't noticed the difference until now. He was thinner than he used to be, too. I had at least 20 pounds of muscle on him now. Among other things. He sat on the bed, pushing off his pants before sliding back. I took the hint, stripping out of mine, but my gaze never left him. I wanted a drink in the way he removed his clothes. This wasn't rushed undressing in the back of the car. This was calm confidence. He knew how hot he was. What other things? I asked, climbing in after him after ditching the rest of my clothes. I couldn't bring myself to hook up with men here. And I'm tired of pretending. I stopped between his thighs, running my hands up the inside of them. Pretending? To be anything but yours. He let out a massive breath as he said it, and the change washed over him. I paused, trying to process the information. Mine. I always have been. I think you knew it. I tried to make myself believe I did the right thing for years because of my family and father. Staying here to take care of him and be what he wanted me to be. I made wrong decision after wrong decision trying to make it work. He shook his head. I loved Faith. But it wasn't this. It wasn't being with you. And it was never even close. The loss has never gotten better, Nolan. And now I know it never will. You are home. And now I know it never will. You are home. Fuck. And now I know it never will. You are home. That changed things. It made his leaving me worse and better all at once. If that makes you not want to do this, I understand. Nothing would make me not want this. Nah, that was reversed. It made his leaving me worse and better all at once. If that makes you not want this. It made his leaving me worse and better all at once. If that makes you not want to do this, I understand. Nothing would make me not want this. I bent over him, bringing our bodies together, bare and exposed for the first time in too long. How is that even possible? He cupped my face with both hands. It hurts but I think it feels better than thinking we were equal and you picked her. I was an idiot, Nolan, and I don't think it will be enough if I spend the rest of my life apologizing, but I'm going to try. His hands found my ass, sliding our bodies together. I didn't know what to say to him or how to articulate my hurt. I knew we'd have to have a conversation about it later to ease the pain in my chest, but I didn't want any of that right now. I wanted to feel connected with him more than anything else in the world. 
and I knew that would be healing in itself. Instead of a reply, I shoved my knees between his, opening Callum up. I tried to lift our bodies. <clears throat> Instead of a reply, I shoved my knees between his, opening Callum up. I tried to lift to watch our bodies, but he tightened his hold, not letting an inch separate us. I want to watch. I pushed against him again. He growled, eyes flashing with lust. I want to feel you. I'm not going anywhere. I brushed my fingers through his hair, and the moment morphed into something soft. Not the frantic need to get off we'd been trapped in before. Then how about this? He shifted, rolling us to our sides, his thighs slipping around mine and over my ass, tangling us together. We both bent forward, foreheads knocking together. Ouch, Callum said before laughing. I rubbed my head, blinking past the pain and unable to stop my body from shaking with laughter. <laughs> Not all at once. <laughs> that hurt. <clears throat> past the pain and unable to stop my body from shaking with laughter. <laughs> Not all at once. That hurt. He pressed his lips to my forehead. Slowly this time. We readjusted, finding our rhythm again. Fuck. My cock pulsed as we found a new and improved way to work our bodies together. I could watch us all day, Callum said through a groan. Wait until I make you watch as I fuck you. I wrapped my hand around us. But for now... I'm going to watch us come. I see what you did there. He trailed his fingers over the curve of my hip and around my ass, teasing all my sensitive areas from balls to my hole and back. Teasing all my <clears throat> sensitive areas from balls to my hole and back. Stop holding back. I whispered against his mouth. You first, he said into my lips. He didn't take his gaze off me, alternating between our dicks and my lips and face, kissing me over and over until I finished. My cock started to get oversensitive, but I didn't dare stop as he let go. His abs tightened and his cock thickened. The sounds he made nearly made me come again. I don't want you to go. And the sounds he made nearly made me come again. I don't want you to go, Callum said as we lay in the mess we'd made, alternating kissing and all the sappy brand new ways of looking into each other's eyes. I never thought I'd be that guy, but here I was reveling in it. I don't want to go either. Being here with him was everything I'd imagined, and more. I'd heard so many stories of people building things up in their heads and being disappointed when reuniting with someone. But this was none of that. We fit. Then stay here. He laughed, smile pressing into my shoulder, softly trailing his fingers down my body. It felt good to have the weight of grief lessened, to experience his smile again. I wanted nothing more than to keep it on his face. I need to do this. For him, for Maddie, for Knox. I had too many reasons to be out there. Can I come back later and bring dinner? I wanted to know if he felt the same, but I didn't dare ask. How did you restart? It wasn't like this was a continuation of the last time. It was new, but old at the same time. And I didn't want to fall into assuming it was more than this moment. Dread crept up my esophagus, and I fought it back, refusing to let the past color how we go forward. Neither of us was the same person, and I had to have some trust in that. If all this was closure, then that's all it was. <clears throat> if all this was closure, then that's all it was. I exhaled all that I could not control. He picked up his head to look me in the eyes, 
chin coming to rest on his hand. I'd be offended if you planned to take my anal virginity and didn't. A smile formed in my lips, but I warned him. I'm not sneaking around. Callum nodded, giving me the most intense stare. I wouldn't ask you to. I didn't ask the questions on the tip of my tongue about his father, the town, my family. I kept them for another time. He had a lot to settle into. I wanted to be the easiest person in his life. Person in his life. Unto. I wanted to be the easiest person in his life. What does Maddie like to eat? You know the place on Maine? Franz is still there? I asked. Callum laughed, shaking his head. No. Still there? I asked. Callum laughed, shaking his head. No, the marshals bought it and turned it into a little Italian place. Aren't they German? No one asks those kind of questions here. The food is good. He shook his head with a laugh. This is weird. How do you think it is for me? I know all the people and none of the updates. Like I'm running the outdated program over here. You are. He cupped my cheek and brushed his lips over mine. You better get dressed unless you want this guy knowing. I don't care who knows. I said, chasing his lips when he pulled back. I'd still rather he not see you. <clears throat> I don't care who knows. I said, chasing his lips when he pulled back. I'd still rather he not see you like this. Callum rolled out of bed and walked bare-assed toward the ensuite. I lingered there, watching him brush his teeth and then disappear into the master closet. I imagined him here, playing house here, bringing Maddie home. All the firsts I'd wanted for myself. I wasn't bitter, more nostalgic for the loss. I wanted my own firsts with Callum, but I couldn't jump the gun. Pushing out of bed, I collected my clothes, redressing before Callum reappeared. He stood in the doorway, watching as I pulled on my shirt. Like what you see? I asked, brushing my hands over it. I probably didn't smell so hot, but I was going back out in the woods. A shower and back in a dirty clothes would be a waste. Of course I do. He strolled over, brushing his hand over my bulge as he passed, heading for the door. Hey... I growled under my breath as he unlocked it. What? Callum asked with a huge smile. I'm going to have to walk around with a happy if you don't stop. And why is that? He twisted the knob, but didn't open it. You know why. I fixed him in a heated gaze. Taking a half step towards me, he lowered his voice and asked, Is it because you haven't been inside me? My eyes flickered closed and a groan stirred in my throat. Yes. Will you be thinking about it? All afternoon. Good. If you don't come back to me desperate, I'm going to be disappointed. They grabbed at my hip, fingers leaving a heated trail in their wake. I want it now. Callum cocked his head. Now? If I had time, I'd throw you into bed and take what I want. Like you used to? I nodded slowly, but not your cock in my mouth. I'd spend the rest of the day inside you. His nostrils flared and his pupils dilated. Bring back condoms. I reached for his hand, but he backed out. Quick as I could, I sprung forward, fisting a hand in his shirt. You're not going to be able to walk tomorrow. Quick as I could, I sprung forward, fisting a hand in his shirt. You're not going to be able to walk tomorrow. Shit, no one. He muttered against my mouth, all breathy. His voice tasted like need. Snoop barked. 
and we both froze, listening. We stilled, mouth to mouth, heady, listening. Daddy! Not quite desperate enough. We stilled, heady, listening. Daddy! That'll do it. I'm going to give it one more try, though. If we don't like this, we'll keep the last one. We stilled, mouth to mouth, heady, listening. Daddy! Listening. Daddy! That's about as desperate of a nine-year-old girl as I can do.